Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of T-365. Today's episode, we're covering all of the updates for Microsoft in March of 2023. If you follow along with my update videos in the past, you know I focus in on what's relevant to the MSP space, blocking out the noise from the 100 or so announcements that come from Microsoft each month. As we're walking through, definitely comment below on the feature or update that you're most excited about. And as always, if this content's helpful, go ahead and like and subscribe. Otherwise, let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, we have a lot of announcements to cover today, but just a quick reminder that I do supplement this video with a blog post down below. A lot more information about all these announcements and helpful resources as well, if you wanna check that out. Getting started here, we're gonna start with Microsoft Teams as we usually do though. And this first announcement's a green screen feature in Microsoft Teams. If you checked in my last video, I talked about the virtual background effect, much like if you're familiar with the Zoom experience today. And this is basically just enhancing that because they saw a lot of distortion with the video content with you being in the virtual background effect as well too. So green screen is just helping out with that. I do have instructions on how to set that up within Teams in the blog post, but this will be coming out mid-April and be complete by late April. Next one here I'm not a huge fan of, but I know a lot of people will like it, which is avatars for Microsoft Teams. Basically, you're going to have an avatar app within the Teams App Store. You can download, you can configure your own avatars, and then you can join as the avatar in the meeting experience. This will be happening late March, be complete by early April. So the next one here is related to the new Microsoft Teams Windows client. Microsoft's really been working towards making the client faster and also reducing the amount of resources that it needs from a computer standpoint, system resources. So essentially they've made it faster here and they're touting about a 50% reduction in memory as well. So you can experience this around the mid-April timeframe. The next one here is related to explicit recording consent for Teams meetings. This policy you can create in the Teams Admin Center and push out to users or groups within the organization. But essentially, as you can see in the screenshot there, it does require all of the users to consent to being recorded. And if they do not, it will shut down all their resources, meaning that they won't be able to share their camera, their mic, or their screen, for instance. It won't prohibit them from actually being participant in the meeting, but it won't capture anything from that user. So it's more compliant way, in some cases, of recording a meeting. This will happen late March, be complete by mid-April. The last one here for Microsoft Teams is this new files app in Teams. As you can see in the screenshot down below, it's really doing a great job of organizing all of your files for quick access across all of your Teams channels, as well as what you've shared and the files that you have within the Teams ecosystem here. So it's really all about accessibility in my opinion with this, but it might be really attractive for a lot of users who have files spread out across many different Teams channels, many different chats, things like that. Timelines for this one's early April, be complete by mid-April. Shifting into Microsoft Intune here, this first one is just kind of a housekeeping item. I touched on this last week that they renamed the Admin Center from the Endpoint Manager Admin Center to the Intune Admin Center, kind of going back to where we were. And now, as I called last week, they renamed the URL as well. So this is intune.microsoft.com in the future. And then around the September timeframe of this year is when you'll actually start to be redirected to that URL. But if you want to start using it now, you can as well too. The other one here is the Intune Suite, which I did also touch on last week. I wanted to follow up with it as well too because they've introduced some of the features that they were touting um, into a preview, including the Endpoint Privilege Management feature, which I'm most excited about. And we'll likely be doing a video on in the next few weeks here. So again, that's GA. You can go ahead and activate a trial today and check out some of those features. Um, but some of these features are still in preview as well too that you'll slowly see come and roll out over time. Shifting into Microsoft Exchange here, this is a popular one as well. This is the Microsoft Authenticator Lite in Outlook. So this is allowing users who are on iOS or Android devices to leverage the Outlook application for MFA prompts instead of having to download the Microsoft Authenticator app and go through that process as well to, to supplement the MFA prompts that they're getting for number matching and things like that. So you can see that in these screenshots down below here. Timeline for this one is on May 26, it will be enabled for users by default unless you take the action as the admin to disable it or enable it before then. If you already have the Authenticator app, you'll still continue to use that, and that's actually what Microsoft still recommends. But this is actually a convenience factor for users who haven't downloaded the Authenticator app as well. The next two features here are related to Exchange. First one's related to bookings with me going public. 
Microsoft has really expanded the feature set of Microsoft bookings to act more like a Calendly. If you're familiar with that for scheduling appointments with users, both internal and external to your organization, I'm personally a fan of it as well too. I don't think it's as baked as Calendly, but it is very similar and I definitely would check it out if you're not using a third-party tool like that for scheduling because it can really speed up that back and forth that you have to go through sometimes. The other one's more related to security here and this is for users who have licensing in the Defender for Office 365 space. If you have those alerts configured as well, there's gonna be new alerts generated here when a user reports a message as junk or they take a message out of the junk folder and restore it as well too. So you can decide as the admin of what you wanna do with those actions or what workflows you might want to create. With just new alerts being generated here in the future, that'll happen mid-March, be complete by late March. Okay, shifting into the Microsoft 365 app section here. This first one I would think that everybody probably knows about. It was probably one of the most popular announcements in March and over the past year, honestly. This is Microsoft 365 Copilot, which is combining the power of large language models like ChatGPT, which everybody's very familiar with now these days as well, uh, with your data in Microsoft 365 Graph and providing a lot of powerful insights, but also giving you a lot of leverage in the typical apps that you use today for productivity, like Word, Outlook, Teams, things like that. So definitely we'll link the video as well too. If you haven't seen a demo of that, definitely go check that out. It's pretty awesome. Um, yet to come as far as the timelines for ETAs. There's a couple of people here in an isolated public preview, but they're going to announce more about that coming soon. And additionally, maybe some information about whether this is going to be a premium paid service as well, too. Another app that's kind of under the radar because of Copilot is Microsoft Loop, which has come into a public preview here as well, too. This is web and mobile co-creation app. I like to think of it like a more advanced document creation tool. If you're familiar with something like Confluence or Notion or Evernote, this is a much similar experience where you have a much richer document creation tool than something like OneNote, for instance, but also it's built for more team collaboration versus just personal notes that you might do today in OneNote as well. The public preview will be coming out late March. I'll link below the website itself so you can check this out and see if it's something you might be interested in from a documentation standpoint. Um, but Microsoft has still stated that it will be free public preview, but they're going to probably license this and price this in a certain way in the future. Last one here is more of a housekeeping item because there's a heavy end user impact here if you have users in Excel using Power Queries. So if your team is using any existing get or transform data queries within Excel, you won't be accessible after a certain date unless you have the certain frameworks installed, which you can see here below. And so if a user tries to use these Power Queries after June 1st without having those things installed, they will receive an error message. So just want to get ahead of that if you have users in your organization or the organizations you're managing using that. Otherwise, you're likely going to get some help desk tickets. Last section here, Microsoft admin section. We've been touching on GDAP now for some weeks, but just want to update again because there was uh, more updates on the actual timelines. So we talked about last time the auto transition of DAP relationships to GDAP, meaning that they're going to auto convert them into a subset of predefined roles that they're selecting. And this month they actually defined and presented what those roles will be, which I'll link on my blog post. We're still waiting for timelines to come out on them stopping net new DAP relationships or delegated admin permission relationships and the retirement of the bulk migration tool. They did add some more functionality to the bulk migration tool so that you can remove DAP relationships in bulk as well if you haven't started doing that process already. Last announcement here is public preview of the system preferred multi-factor authentication method. It's kind of a cool feature just because it's encouraging users to reuse a stronger method of MFA. And that is saying that if they have MFA methods registered such as telephony methods like SMS or calling, and they also have Microsoft Authenticator, it's going to redirect them to use Microsoft Authenticator over SMS even if that's been their default method of MFA prompt. So trying to encourage users to use stronger methods of multi-factor authentication. And eventually I do think Microsoft will deprecate some of those legacy methods like the telephony methods that they have as well. So this is in public preview. And by the time you're watching this video, it will already be out so you can check it out. And then they'll have some more explicit opt-in for this as well too, if you wanted to use it within your organization.
Okay guys, that's everything I have for you in today's video. Definitely comment below if you have any questions or comments on anything I covered today. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, definitely like and subscribe if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space. Thanks guys, have a great day.